All right, today I'm doing a little mod to my 9700. I'm gonna be replacing the uh, VHF uh, SO239 socket on the back of the radio with a N-type connector like this. So what's on there now is something like this, not exactly the same, at least I hope not. And again, we're gonna be replace, replacing it with this one. I'll explain why I'm doing that after I've already done it. So, um, I wasn't going to do it at all, but um, I really didn't start out worrying about the 9700 with it. So, but I, what I've been doing, I've been replacing uh, the SO239s and these UHF mobiles with uh, N types on a couple of my radios that I use for a repeater use, like this one over here has got them. But uh, they're super cheap. Um, if you buy the regular Amphenols, they're like, $14 a piece, but if you go on AliExpress, you can buy these for, uh, uh, I think they're 12 for $14 or something like that. They're super cheap. So worth doing. Uh, uh, I'm hoping this connector is not in the radio because as you can see, this one has three uh, solder points, right? Two for the ground and of course one in the middle for the, for the center pin. And anybody that's ever tried to unsolder something that uh, is uh, soldered in more than one place, you know that's one of those deals where you got to kind of heat heat up one side and then heat that up and kind of work it work it off. And I really don't want to do that on this radio. So this never really even crossed my mind until I was looking at the service manual and I was like, wait a minute, let me go look at the the because uh, I just assumed it was a it was a connector like this, right, with the, with the ears on it, but that is not the case apparently. We look at the service manual here here's the the vhf side you can see instead of having the ears on the connector itself it's like this without the ears and then they use this shim to connect to the board so the, the shim is essentially a washer between the the uh, two flame socket and the chassis and uh long story short looks like it's just a matter of taking the two bolts out unsoldering the center pin and you know putting it putting the new one in soldering it up. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll get the radio. I'll, uh, I don't even think I'm going to remove it from any of this stuff. I think I'm just going to take the rails off and pop the cover off and get after it. So, uh, yeah, let's get started. Let me get the radio broken down. Okay. Well, you're not going to believe this, but anyway, to get in the top, I forgot there's a shield right here. You have to remove also. So there's that take off the cover. You know, there's about a million screws in there, but take that off, take that cover up, but you're not going to believe this. The center pin is not even soldered. It's just clipped in. So this is literally just a matter of removing the two screws and sticking the uh, new one in there, the new type in, from what I can tell. So no soldering involved, no nothing. So, but what's strange is the VHF, you can see it's just clipped in, but at least the UHF one, I can't see the, the 1.2, it's soldered in. Isn't that strange? That is really weird. All right, well, let me, let me get this thing unscrewed and pop the new one in. Yep, that's all it is. Can you believe that? Literally just that simple. Wow. Honestly, if I'd have known that, I probably would have done it a long time ago. Well, 
to me, I think that's something everybody should do at this point. I mean, if you don't have those skills, then you're in trouble. Well, there you go. Clipped in just like the other one. Huh. Wow. Okay, that was easy. All right, she's all back together. That was a very easy mod. I don't even think you have to take the radio apart. I think you could do it without even removing the covers. I think you could just go back there and pop a new one in. I'd, I'd give it a shot before I took all the covers off. Got nothing to lose. But uh, I just forgot to mention what, why I'm doing this. I, I told you I would tell you why I was doing it. Well, the reason I'm doing it is because I'm getting some descents, some like uh, crossband descents on the satellites. Uh, I don't remember if it's more common when it's a UHF uplink or a VHF downlink and vice versa. I don't remember. But even at 25 watts with this radio, um, you know, I'm getting some, some washout on the opposite band. And it not only happens on this one, uh, it also happens on my little FM with the mobiles in it. So it runs 25 watts too. In fact, it's worse on that, on that uh, other radio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-pigtail this aero antenna with uh, RG400. That's what I got on hand. And I'm going to terminate it. Instead of using the PL259s, I'm going to use the Type Ns. Uh, and I'm also going to lengthen it. I think I have put like five feet from the handle to the end of these. That's not enough. You need about eight or nine feet, I think. So that's it. That's all. That's the reason I was doing it. So, you know, and again, do you really want to terminate, you know, double shielded, you know, you could say high quality coax with a PL259? No. You would at least use a BNC and you'd even better you would use a type in in my opinion so that's uh why i did it so thanks appreciate everybody watching